Okay. Yeah, I've started the recording. Yeah, yeah it's okay. Okay. So Muna can start. Uh, can you hear us, sir? Yes, yes, yes. We can hear. Thank you. Can you start? Uh, yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, this talk is a continuation of my previous talk, which I gave earlier. And uh, I will present a proof of a result, which I have stated in my previous talk. The title of my talk is same in Bell property limit for Isaac functions of the Laplace built time operator on symmetric spaces. Uh, let us recall some notations. Uh, the symbol F1 comparable to F2 for two positive expressions F1 and F2 means that they are constants C1 greater than 0 and C2 greater than 0. So that C1 F1 less than equal to F2 less than equal to C2 F1. And that X S comma denotes the sphere of radius R with center at X north to Rn. The spherical minimal operator MRF is given by MRFX uh, is nothing but average of F over sphere of radius R with center at X. Here omega R is the surface measure of MRFX. So one can write this MRFX as a convolution sigma R X, where sigma R is the normalized surface measure of H0. Is this device okay? Yeah. Yeah, but we cannot, we cannot also look at this. Okay. okay. Okay, so uh, so mean uh, we are discussing about this mean value property. A continuous function f1 r is harmonic if and only mr f x is equal to f x for all x belongs to r n and for the all r greater than zero. This is called spherical mean value. Since uh, mr f x is called f convolution sigma r x, uh, one can phrase this spherical mean value property in a different way. So a continuous function f on Rn is harmonic if and only the convolution sigma Rx is equal to fx for all x equal to Rn for all R greater than zero. Sorry, uh, Muna, have you shared your slides? Uh, yeah. Oh, shit. Shit. I don't know. Uh, can you share the screen to the slides? Yeah, so, 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 yeah, that. Sorry, very sorry. Yeah, I, sir, somehow I can't see any, any slides. Uh, no, sir. Can you see the screen? I can see only. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can see the slides. Oh, you can see? Okay. Uh. I don't know why. Okay, fine. I'll figure it out as long as the slides are visible. Okay, thanks. Okay, maybe try rejoining the meeting. Usually it helps. Ah, okay. So I will start from being in the word. Yeah, no, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I can see them now. Thank you. Thanks, Oman. Yeah, please continue. Sorry. So this is the result we are discussing about. Uh, Okay, so we are discussing about an asymptotic mean value property for a harmonic function. Okay, precisely on Rn, we are discussing about this theorem in for a continuous function. F on Rn, limit to R tension negative, F convolution sigma Rx is equal to Fx uniformly on compact sets, then F is a harmonic function. So this result was just to evaluate for n is equal to 2. Uh, in, yeah, actually, if you do read West paper, it deals with only R2. And the thing is, <clears throat> though is, uh, this question makes for any makes sense for any general end, he has only proved the result for uh, R2. And uh, one can utilize his idea to give a uh, proof in the uh, case of R. Okay. So let me quickly give the sketch of the proof. So what one proves that this sigma R convolution sigma T is equal to integration from minus T to T sigma R plus S D mu S. That is sigma R convolution sigma T can be written as mixture of measure sigma R plus S with a mod S less than equal to T. So I will give the proof only in case of R2. Okay, so uh, this means that the sigma R convolution sigma T is called the integration from minus T to T sigma R plus S A D mu S for any measurable subset A of R2. Now F convolution sigma T, this is called to uh, if I am assuming that uh, uh, limit attention printing, if conversion sigma R converges to F uniformly on comparison. So in place of F, I can put that limit attention printing, F conversion sigma R. 
So you can, uh, this is equal to T meter at tension PT, F convolution sigma, R convolution sigma T. So this is equal to limit at tension PT, F convolution, and in place of sigma, R convolution sigma T, I use that equation one, and I put that, this is called um, integration of from minus T to T, sigma R plus S T US. Now I can take the convolution inside. So this is called limit R tension iterative integration from minus T to T F convolution sigma R plus S D mu S. And uh, this is equal to uh, now. Uh, so I use the hypothesis that limit R tension iterative F convolution sigma R converges to F uniform non compressor. Then I can use the uh, dominated conversion theorem and I can push the limit inside. So this is called to integration from minus T to T limit R tension printing F convolution sigma R plus S D mu S. So uh, now uh, I use the hypothesis. So this is called to integration minus T to T F D mu S. And remember this is a probability with the mu. So this is called F. Therefore, thus F convolution sigma T is called F for F D T greater than zero. Therefore, if you have money. So, where is the R2? Yeah, yeah, I'm saying that. So, in case of R, uh, in case of Adam case, uh, so uh, this proving this one sigma R convolution sigma T is little difficult. So, one has to use Fourier transform for that. But in case of R2, one can prove this equation one by just simple calculation. The reason is that uh, R2 you can identify with complex number. And uh, and that has a multiplicative structure, multiplication structure. And if you look at the unit uh, sphere in R2, that is really S1, and that is a group. Somehow you really utilize those two things to simplify the calculation. In this case, you can do it just by elementary calculation. But the, in the higher in some case, you have to take for it as well. So in the symmetric space, X is equal to uh, G, G mod K and their group, their natural group actions of G and K as K. So this proof is little easier in case of symmetry. Okay. So this is some definition that G be a connected non compact semi simple group with finite center and of real rank one, and K be a maximum compact subgroup of G. Then this homogeneous space G, my, G mod K will be called a rank one symmetric space of non compact type. Yeah, so it is sort of only simple spherical algebra, or you can have other sort of algebra also. Uh, sphere ball algebra, so you can see anything else. I do not know, but uh, these are some I don't know, uh, but these are only something shock shock is really fun. This convolution of two measures and getting it. Even for if I say just the boundary of a cube or something, can we tell me to this kind of thing? Here actually, you, 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 could prove, you can prove this because if you take the sigma at, at that is given by Bessel function. And there is multiplicative, multiplicative, multiplicative formulas for Bessel function. And you have to use that for geometry. Uh, you, uh, you, if you want, want to avoid that, you can use the geometry. So to prove this question one. Can I post this again? Sure. So, a symmetric stress let G be a connected non compact semi simply group with finite center and of real rank one, and K be an maximum compact subgroup of G. Then, this homogeneous space G by G mod K will be called a rank one symmetric space of non compact type. Okay, so G mod K is a homogeneous space, so you can identify functions on X with right kind uh, functions on G. Similarly, we will identify continuous functions on X with right kind and continuous functions on G. This G mod K is a remanent manifold and the uh, remanent metric is left invariant. Similarly, the distance function is left invariant. Okay, so let rho denotes the half sum of positive rows. So precisely, rho is the uh, a positive quantity and uh, rho is, is half of the limit of the mean curvature of the geodesic sphere at the radius of sphere tends to infinity. So, we fix a base base point O is equal to EK called as the origin of X. Since this is a matrix space, we can talk about gradient function. So for X of X, that mod X denotes the distance of X from the origin O. A function F on X is radial. If and only if it is a left k invariant function on X, 
Similarly, a function f on x is radial if and only if it is a k by invariant function of g. This property is only peculiar to rank one symmetric spaces of non uh, rank one symmetric space of non compact type. For instance, in higher dimensional symmetric spaces, a function may be radial, but it may not be k by invariant. So, at one has a for a semi simple mean roof with finite center, uh, one has a called uh, there is something called the Vasa decomposition that is C can be written as product of three rows K A, A, and then K stands for compact, A stands for abelian, and stands for the important link. So, any x belongs to C can be written as Kx um, into exponential of Hx into Nx. This Kx belongs to K. And Hx belongs to the B algebra of A and Nx belongs to A. So I am assuming that this is the uh, G is of real rank one, but for A can be parameterized by R and every element of A as the form A T is equal to exponential of T H naught or some three states not belonging to the D algebra of A. It is known that every element X belongs to G can be written as X is equal to K1, A T, K2, or some K1, K2 belong to K. And T belongs to R. So let A plus, uh, I define A plus by A T so that T data is zero. Then A plus closer is equal to A T so that A T uh, so that T data is equal to zero. I have something called cut on decomposition. That means G can be written as K A plus closer and K. Therefore, X any X belongs to G can be written as K1 A T K2 T data is equal to zero. This cut and decomposition is not unique, but however, this T part of this cut and decomposition is unique. Okay. So, okay. Now I told you that G mod K is a really matrix there. So there is a distance function on G mod K. So using the distance function on G mod K, so I define a function D on G cross G. So for X comma Y not to G, we define D X comma Y is equal to dsk comma yk. So this d is not a really distance function on g cross z. This is a very pseudo distance or d is a pseudo metric on g cross z. But the, but the d function d is really left invariant. Okay. And it satisfies triangle and triangle uh, inequality. And I define this mod x is equal to the distance between O and S x t. It is known that uh, mod of K1 ATK2 is equal to mod T. Okay. Remember this map. This mod of K1 ATK2 is mod T. We use this. So for any K belongs to K and T greater than 0 and R greater than 0, we have this thing. R minus T is less than or equal to mod of ATK less than or equal to R plus T. Okay. So this proof part is uh, this part we, we use later. So um, this is important thing. So for any k belongs to k and t greater than zero and r greater than zero, we have this thing r minus t less than or equal to mod of a t k less than or equal to r plus t. So proof is very easy. Proof r is equal to mod of k a. This is equal to nothing but um, d e comma zero a. Okay. So d is not a distance, but I will keep on calling that d is a distance. Okay. So so d is equal to e. Uh, this is called d. In distance between E and K here. Now I use the time of the inequality. So this is less than or equal to D E comma A minus T plus D A minus T K here. So D E comma A minus T is T now plus D A minus T comma K here. So this is called T plus. Now I use the fact that distance is really left invariant. So D plus t plus d a t comma a minus t a t k, k a. So this is a t plus d e comma a t k a. So this is t plus mod a t k a. Okay, so that will give you r minus t is less than or equal to mod of a t k a. So a mod of a t k a is called distance between e and a t k a. So this is less than or equal to t e comma a t plus d a t I am using the triangle making equality here. So this is called T plus D E comma K. Okay. So this is called T plus mod K. This is called to T plus R. So I am getting the here mod of A T K is less than equal to R plus T. So from use three and four, I am using this. I am getting this proof. 
sorry can i ask you a question yeah on the previous slide yeah so uh, what if r is less than t i mean then it's sort of the left hand the first inequality is sort of pointless right because the anyway distance is always non negative pseudo so negative yeah. so in that case you can also fix i mean in that case can you get t minus r on the left like is this true with modulus on the left hand side mod r minus t on the left hand side Is that the negative, and therefore that will be really satisfied. Yeah, yeah. So, so is equation is the inequality true? The first inequality in the equation two true when you replace r minus t by absolute value of r minus t. And because for the argument, you even have to do something on the right hand side, but this kept in it's only invariant on one side. I thought right so. T and R, then the distance, the symmetric is only invariant on one side. Okay, it will come. I don't. Uh, okay, anyway, it will come. So I was just asking if the inequality is true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay, so for lambda, now to see that prime lambda with a unique real function of x with respect to the row is the row is equal to k. Satisfying this delta pi lambda is equal to minus lambda square plus rho square pi lambda and pi lambda o is equal to one. So pi lambda is the radial function on x, therefore it is a k by invariant function on g. Since pi lambda is a radial function on x, this uh, pi lambda k one a t k two is equal to pi lambda a t. This is equal to pi lambda mod t. Pi lambda mod t means in in the right hand side. Actually, I am treating it as is a treating it as a function on non-negative reals. Pi lambda is a strictly positive radial function on lambda goes to imaginary line. So this is important thing. So pi lambda is strictly positive for lambda goes to imaginary line. Pi lambda is a real value function for lambda goes to the R. And this mod of pi lambda x is less than equal to pi of i imaginary part of lambda x for each x goes to x. Let uh, lambda not belong to R be fixed. Then it is known that there exists R lambda greater than zero. So that mod of pi lambda r is comparable to e to the power mod of imaginary part of lambda minus rho r for all r greater than r lambda. I have discussed this thing in the previous talk also. So this estimate we will really use. I have written that in the uh, in that blackboard and I have given that number five also. So so that will be used later. Okay. So now what I am saying that uh, suppose you take. Uh, Two function on x, both f and h. F is a function on x, and h is a function on x. So I define. I want to define this convolution of two function on x. So what you uh, to define a convolution structure? But uh, to define a convolution structure, you need a group structure. Okay. So what you to do? You regard this f as a right k-invariant uh, function on f, and h as a right k-invariant function. Sorry. So let me say it once more. So f is a function on x, and h is a function on f. I want want to define the convolution of f f and h. Let me define a convolution structure. We need a convolution to define a convolution. We need a group structure. So what you do? You regard f as a right k-invariant function on G, and h is a right k-invariant function on G. And you define the convolution h convolution h in the group level. Then you check that this f convolution h as a right invariant function on G. Therefore, f convolution h is a function on x. So this is the way people define convolution of two functions on x. Similarly, if you take uh, a measure on x, it can be identified with, uh, identified with a right invariant measure on G. So similarly, one can define two. Uh, Convolution of two measures on on x. Okay. Now I want to define this so-called spherical mean value operator. For a function on f on x, this spherical mean value operator M R F. Actually, M R F is uh, is a function on x, but we will give the description on the group level as a right invariant function. So this M R F x is equal to integer small over k f of x k a r b k. Okay. And this is nothing but f convolution sigma r x. Uh, where sigma r is the normalized surface measure of the zero risk pure and zero power model. So dk is the normalized hand measure of k, and sigma r is the normalized surface measure of zero risk pure and zero power model. 
Okay, so the MRFX is equal to integration over K F of X K R D K is equal to F convolution sigma R X. Now I uh, let it be a continuous function eh, F on X. Then delta F is equal to minus lambda square plus rho square A. If and only this MRFX is equal to pi lambda A R FX for all X belong to G and for all other things on zero. This is called the general spherical minimal property. Now uh, since MRFX is equal to if convolution sigma rx, so therefore we get that delta f is equal to minus lambda square plus rho square a. If and only this f convolution sigma rx is equal to phi lambda a f x for all x belong to c and for all x to c. Now since delta phi lambda is equal to minus lambda square plus rho square phi lambda, we have integration over k phi lambda x k r dk is equal to phi lambda x into phi lambda a r. This is for this will happen for all x belong to c and for all r to c. This equation six is called functional equation, and we will use this thing later. And uh, I have written that equation six in the blackboard also. So now there is a limit in the property as radius r tends to zero. If a continuous function f on x satisfies limit r tends to zero plus mrfx mrfx minus phi lambda a r by fx by r square is equal to zero in the form of the compact subset of x. Then delta f is equal to minus lambda square plus rho square f. As I said last time, that this is a local result, and this result can be proved uh, from the Euclidean result. Okay. So now an immediate corollary is, is the following: uh, immediate corollary is this: that f be a right invariant continuous function on G, so that f convolution sigma r x is equal to phi lambda a r f x for every x not to G. And for every zero less than equal to r less than delta, then delta f is equal to minus lambda square plus rho square. F. So that is to say that f is a, a right convariant. F b is a right convariant from continuous function on G. That means f is indeed a, a function on continuous function on f. And it says that if f satisfies uh, this spherical generalized spherical minimal property for all sufficiently small radius r. With zero less than equal to one less than delta, then f is an eigen function of delta with eigen value minus lambda square plus rho square. So you we will use this corollary. So this corollary is important. So now I you this uh, I you this is the theorem I you wish to prove that f and g be two continuous function on x if for a fixed lambda not to see one by phi lambda and r f x converges to g x for every x spin of x uniformly on convergence. As R central infinitive on the set R greater than zero, so that phi lambda not equal to zero, then G is an eigen function of delta with eigen value minus lambda square plus rho square. So what we will do? I will prove this theorem on the group level. This is the theorem. This is the theorem which I have stated in the level of symmetric space. So this theorem amounts to prove the following theorem: Let A and G be two right k invariant continuous functions on G. On G. If for a fixed lambda we want to see one by phi lambda a r, so f convolution sigma r x converges to g x for every x belong to g x uniformly on compact subsets of g as r tends to infinity on the set r greater than zero, so that phi lambda a r not equal to zero, then g is an eigen function of delta with eigen value minus lambda square plus plus square. So I will prove this theorem five, and this is easy to see that. This is exactly this uh, theorem for is exactly theorem by. So okay, so I okay, so I will prove this theorem by. So what is the idea? Idea is something. Okay. The first one. Yes, let me write this right there. Okay, so so what I will prove that. Uh, uh, we will prove that G convolution sigma T is equal to really phi lambda is the D for the zero and then equal to T less than delta. Okay. Uh, or sufficiently, uh, okay. Then by, by using that previous corollary, which I have stated, that, that will then be delta D is equal to minus one plus one. So that corollary has to be used. So which I have stated this morning. So the idea is the following. So limit uh, limit R tends to infinity 
So what we will do, okay, so let us type as EG, remove this A. So I will take convolution with sigma T. In both sides, that will be G convolution with sigma T. So you expect that unit are tensor negative. So I Yes, but then this is so you can take the convolution and uh, um, you can just justify this thing. This thing is same as this thing. So the convolution sigma t. So now what I will uh, this is this will happen for all the now um, I will show that this thing. Okay, what is there in left hand side? So this thing will be okay, let us study. It will be the pi lambda 18 and for all. So for all subject that I will uh, so that this thing will is going to pi lambda 18. So from this equation and this equation, so what you will get that you will get so from this equation you will get that g convolution sigma t is equal to i lambda i t z or zero less than equal to t less than delta. Then you can apply that corollary to compute and tell that this equal to minus lambda square plus plus square. Plus. So this uh, first thing is really you can believe that. So even if you do not, even if you don't see the book, you can believe that. So but second thing is you do not do that. So we will pass to the second thing. Okay. So this thing actually I have to do. So for, for that, so I have to really first uh, determine what is this. One by I lambda I R. This is then convolution sigma R convolution sigma T minus I lambda T. So, so I have to find this. Okay. So what I will prove that uh, this is really this. One by I lambda I R with convolution sigma R convolution sigma T X. Minus I lambda A T G X is equal to integration over K I lambda A T K to A divided by I lambda A into 1 by I lambda A of mod of A T K to A. This is the um, and F convolution sigma of mod of A T K to A X minus G T K. So this expression I will prove and this expression will be direct if and only I lambda A is not equal to 0 and I lambda A T K R not equal to zero for any case of it. So this is this equation I will prove provided this is the condition. I lambda a not equal to zero and I lambda a t k a not equal to zero. So okay, so let x belong to g. Let r comma t is greater than zero because that I lambda a not equal to zero and I lambda a t k a not equal to zero for any k belong to k. Okay. So this condition I am taking because that are personal the derivative from pan and error and pan and error together. So then any for any such R and T, we have one by pan and error, if convolution sigma R, convolution sigma Tx minus pan and error Tgx. So this is equal to one by pan and error into integration over K. I use the definition if convolution sigma R, xk1 at dk1 minus pan and error Tgx. So this, I, I, this is equal to one by pan and error integration over K. And in uh, integration over k f of x k one at k two a d k two d k one minus pi lambda at g a. Now for the first term of that ex expression, I will use that thing that I will uh, use Fubini's theorem. So I will interchange the order of integral. So this is called one by pi lambda a 
integration over k cross k f of x k1 at t k2 at dk1 dk2 and for the second thing which i have written in the array actually i will use that functional equation so that will give you this is uh, this is uh, I, I will use that functional equation 6 which i have written there so this is minus 1 by pi lambda r integration over k pi lambda at k2 a dk2 gx Okay, so this is equal to I can take one by pi lambda here common. So this is equal to one by pi lambda r integration over k cross k f of x k one at k two a d k one d k two minus integration over k pi lambda at k two a g x d k two. Okay, so this is one by pi lambda a integration over k. Now power of integration over k is f of x k one at k two a d k one. Minus pi lambda at tk2 a gx tk2. So I am writing the last line. This is the last line of this thing. So this is the same thing. So this is equal to 1 by pi lambda a and integration over k pi lambda at tk2 a. I am simply multiplying and divided, dividing by pi lambda at tk2 pi lambda at tk2 a. So this is equal to 1 by pi lambda a integration over k pi lambda at tk2 a into 1 by whole into 1 by pi lambda at k2 a and integration over k f of x k1 at k2 a dk1 minus gx dk2. So this is equal to, okay, so I will take pi lambda a to inside. So this is called integration over k pi lambda at k2 a pi lambda a uh, all into 1 by pi lambda at k2 a uh, integration over k f of x k1 at k2 a dk1 minus gs dk2. Now I will use the cut and decomposition. Let at k2 a is equal to really k3 a s k4 with a s k2 runs equal to 0. So this s will depend upon at k2 a and precisely s is equal to mod of at k2 a. Okay, so let us write that here. So s is equal to really mod of at k2 a. So this is can you really remember. So next page, so from actually this is the same thing. So one get that uh, one gets that one by phi lambda a if convolution sigma r convolution sigma t x minus phi lambda at g x. This is called integration number k phi lambda at k2 a divided by phi lambda a. Uh, 1 by phi lambda at k2 a uh, and f of x k1 at k2 a dk1 minus gx dk2. So in place of at k2 a, I am uh, substituting by k3 a s k4. Remember, we have uh, this at k2 a is equal to real k3 a s k4. This is my pattern decomposition and s is mod of at k2 a. I am putting that. Now what I will use, I will use the fact that phi lambda is k by invariant function and f is right k invariant function. If phi lambda is k by invariant function, then phi lambda k3 s k4 will be phi lambda s. Okay, I will use that. So this is called integration over k phi lambda at k2 a divided by phi lambda a all into 1 by phi lambda s into integration over k f of s k1 k3 k s dk1 minus gx dk2. So now um, I have utilized this standard it is right k variable. Okay. So now I will do a change of variable k1 going to k1 k3 inverse. So that will be so k3 term will go away. So this is called to integration over k pi lambda at k2 a by pi lambda a all into 1 by pi lambda a s into integration over k f of x k1 a s dk1 minus gx dk2. So now, <clears throat> so this is equal to, uh, if you integration over k, phi lambda a dk2 a, phi lambda a, 1 by phi lambda s, f conversion sigma s s minus gx into dk2. Okay. So this uh, integration over k f of x k1 a s dk1, I have simply replaced by f conversion sigma s s. So this is equal to, uh, okay, another thing is S is equal to mod of at k2 here. So you put that, so this is called integration over k, uh, uh, one by phi lambda A of mod of at k2 here, F convolution sigma, uh, mod of at k2 here x minus gs dk2. 
So, okay. So, what I will do, I will make next step. So, this is the equation A, so which I have written. So, what I will do, I will take a mod here now. Take a mod. So, this is um, this equal to will be less than equal to this. Okay, so the mod will go inside. So, this is mod, this thing. This is really one by five. This will be equation by. So, so from answer from eight we get that this mod of one by five lambda is yeah? f one by some sigma and one by some sigma x minus five lambda into z is mod. This is called doing uh, mod of integration over k five lambda a t k to here yeah? by five lambda here yeah? uh, over into one by five lambda here yeah? mod of a t k to here yeah? uh, f one by some sigma of mod of a t k to here yeah? x. Minus Z F T K to mod. So this is less than equal to integration over K. Uh, mod of uh, I lambda T K to F by I lambda A. So one by I lambda A mod of A T K to A F of sigma mod of A T K to A R X minus Z X D K to. So recall that in the above calculation we have assumed that I lambda A is not equal to zero. And I have the A of mod of a t k to A is not equal to zero or any k to the other. Now I will go to the proof. So, so uh, I will divide the proof in two cases. For first case is lambda doesn't belong to us. So if lambda doesn't belong to us, uh, that is lambda is not a non zero real number. This that means phi lambda r is not zero, phi lambda r is not zero for all sufficient new lambda. And we are taking really r times infinity. So uh, this uh, phi lambda r is not equal to zero, this condition is satisfied. Similarly, if t is fixed, if t is fixed, t is fixed, this thing, this mod of a t. To yeah. Okay, so this will be greater than equal to R minus T. So if when R get tends to infinity, so R minus T will tend to infinity. Therefore, phi lambda A of mod of A T K to A will not be zero. So this equation 9 will be valid. Okay. So this is okay. So let lambda not belong to Ashton. We fix x belong to G and T will have zero. So let f seven be given. From the hypothesis, it follows that uh, uh, there exist r not greater than zero. So that for all r with r greater than equal to r not, we have this thing mod of one by phi lambda a f convolution sigma r x minus g x is less than f seven. Okay. So if r is greater than equal to r not plus t, then for each k two plus two k, this mod of a t k two a r greater than equal to R minus T. And this is given equal to R naught plus T minus T. So this is equal to R naught. Okay. So thus going to 10, because of 10, it follows that this mod of 1 by I lambda A of mod of A T K to A F convolution sigma uh, mod of uh, A T K to A X minus G X mod is less than H epsilon for each K to naught K and R get equal to R naught. So this quantity is really uh, less than x two. This quantity is uh, I, don't, I don't know whether whether we will see it. This quantity is less than x one when this r is sorry when uh, this uh, r is equal to r one. So now hence, uh, from this equation you will get that uh, one by i lambda a. Okay, so this is. Uh, this will be less than uh, integration over k mod of pi lambda a tk to a uh, by pi lambda a f7 into dk2. So this is called f7 into integration over k mod of pi lambda a tk2 a uh, by pi lambda a, a dk2. So now we consider this following two case of cases. This lambda is not imaginary. So we are in this case lambda doesn't belong to our term. Lambda is not a 
non zero wave number. So I am dividing that thing in two chapters that lambda belongs to minus zero nine and B lambda doesn't belong to R. So I observe that uh, the second case B also uh, these two sub cases are not disjoint. The second case B also includes case of A except the case lambda is equal to zero. But um, uh, if lambda belongs to imaginary line, this I lambda is a positive function and two favorite is here. So I wanted to show that, therefore I divided into that in this way. So so that it remains bounded. Yeah. Just have to show that yeah. it remains bounded as R goes. Yeah. yeah. So that is the thing. So what lambda is for imaginary line, or, or this phi lambda is really positive function. So you can use the functional equation, and therefore you can get that. And for the second thing, you have to use the thing. So. So of course, then let lambda not imaginary line. We know that phi lambda is a strictly positive function. Hence, for all r greater than equal to r naught plus t from 12, it follows that mod of 1 by phi lambda f a r f converts on sigma r converts on sigma t x minus phi lambda a t g x is less than f sigma into integration over k mod of phi lambda a t k to a r by phi lambda a b k to. So I can really I remove the mod because it is positive. So in epsilon, then to integration over k, I lambda a t k to a r, phi lambda a r is two. So I can use uh, phi lambda a r outside. So epsilon into one by phi lambda a r into integration over k, I lambda a t k to a r dk two. Now if I use the so-called uh, functional equation, so this is called to epsilon into one by phi lambda a r. I lambda a t into phi lambda a. So phi lambda a and phi lambda a will cancel out. So this is equal to epsilon into phi lambda a t. Remember, t we are fixed in the beginning. So since epsilon is arbitrary, so that will give you the mean attention you predict 1 by phi lambda a if convolution sigma, convolution sigma t x uh, is equal to phi lambda a t g x. So, so we are really for lambda, we are. We have done this thing for lambda not in that way. So, okay. So, what for lambda not to So, there are two subcases. So lambda not to imaginal line. So, we have to get limit the absence we are getting. And by lambda r, yeah. this is a convolution sigma, convolution sigma tx, the real lambda t. So I have another subcase. Lambda doesn't belong to R. So this lambda doesn't belong to R. So we have that uh, estimate of a uh, spherical function for substantially larger. We will use that. So mod of phi lambda a t k to a by phi lambda a. This is called to mod of phi lambda h with mod of a t k to a divided by phi lambda a. And this is really comparable to it to the part, mod of imaginary part of lambda minus rho into mod of a t k to a divided by it to the part, mod of imaginary part of lambda minus rho. So now I will I will do a little simplification so that we will give you this is called the e to the part r e to the part rho r minus mod of a t k to a for all subsequent answer. Since the mod of r minus mod of a t k to a this is less than equal to t. So owing to this equation 14, so that that term is bounded. So the mod of phi lambda a t k to a a by phi lambda a is bounded. So into 14, there is it are one minus zero and c to one zero. So that mod of phi lambda a t k to a divided by phi lambda a, a is less than equal to c for any r with r equal to one r one and any k to one. And see if r theta is equal to maximum of r naught t comma r one. So from this thing from 12 and 15, uh, we get that uh, mod of one by phi lambda a f convolution sigma r convolution sigma t x minus phi lambda t g x mod. This is less than f seven in 20 years of work. Mod of phi lambda a t k to a by phi lambda a t k two, and uh, this red part is bounded by c. So this is less than C epsilon. So hence, uh, in this case also, we have the limit of tensor infinity. 
So F convolutions one by pi lambda A R, F convolutions sigma R convolutions sigma T F is equal to pi lambda T G S. So we uh, one lambda not to ask that we have uh, get this. Lambda not to ask that we are getting this. So this equation is highly polynomial. Yes, yes, we already covered this. Yeah, I told you that. Yes, B, no, zero case is not covered, but I zero has also an estimate, so you can. So this is one thing I have put uh, now, since the set X K T, so that K plus to K is compact on the hypothesis, we get this thing that uh, if all that we need to attention to do one by pi lambda A, a convolution is a convolution material, so it's good to Limit at simply take one by pi lambda here. This is the definition of convergence in R S P A to DK. Since uh, this convergence is only for one compact set, so I can push the limit inside using the dominating convergence theorem. So this is called integration of K, limit at simply one by pi lambda a F convolution sigma R S P A to DK. So this is called integration of K, Z S P A to DK. So this is really Z convolution sigma T. So this is one lambda going to last time. Look at this thing. So this is saying that, uh, okay, this is really saying that uh, this is really the convolution sigma t. Okay, so from this two expression, the left hand side is same. So g convolution sigma t x is going to really pi lambda t and uh, d. Here we have fixed t and x. Now p and x are arbitrary. So now, for from sets in and seven to n of this. Since t is s and t are not written, from for the we will get that delta z is equal to minus number square plus plus set. Now the uh, we will discuss the second case when lambda will not cross that. So lambda will not cross that. We have done this thing. Okay. Okay. So now this is the second case. This is really. Um, we have done this thing. So second is lambda not So lambda non the zero set is real unbounded. If you look at this function, I'm going to this pi lambda uh, so that pi lambda here is going to zero. This is real unbounded. But zero set is this thing. Okay, so uh, so there is some problem. You can you cannot use this equation now. So what one does really, okay, so that, okay. So I will put that way, there exists a positive number delta from zero and sequence Rn n log to n so that Rn goes to infinity as n times infinity and phi lambda a r greater than zero whenever Rn minus delta less than equal to r, less than equal to r plus delta. Third thing is phi lambda a r is greater than zero and our zero less than equal to r less than delta. So what is what does that mean? So let us consider this example. So if you look at this thing, that symmetric stuff, x is equal to really s n two c mod s n two. This uh, this phi lambda a r is really lambda sin to lambda r. Lambda sin hyperbolic. This is the expression of pi lambda. So if you plot this function r going to pi lambda a, yes. so this will look like something like this. This is more to zero, but the peak will look. I of the peak will decrease. Okay. So this is uh, my point zero. So this is one. So let us uh, index this uh, x by r1, r2, r3. Okay. So this point is my r1. Okay. This point is r2. This point is r2. Okay. So if I will index like this, so r1, and this I will get a sequence, sequence that rn will go to infinity. Okay. So and at this each point of uh, pi lambda r1 is positive, pi lambda r2 is positive. 
any impact like one slide. So one more. Uh, so when before you replace the AR with the RA. Oh. So you have to that R goes to infinity, phi lambda of AR, right? R going to infinity in the denominator, you have phi lambda of AR. Mm. But you are saying that it's good enough to prove it for A of R in. Yeah. Provided uh, there is some gap. RM is the local maximum, right? And R is where the, uh, the denominator is zero. And denominator is not zero. And if you look at the picture, actually R is where this is maximum. R is, yes. So this is my picture. So this is my picture. So this is my R1 and this is my R2. This uh, around this high lambda here, RM is not zero. It's a positive. Yes, but what about the point say it's zero? I have avoided that point. I? No, I am not taking that point actually. Okay. Uh, use the delta. Use the delta so that they avoid. You are near the maximum. The limit is taken only to the set where it is not zero. Oh, okay, because there is a statement will not fix. Actually, I have explained that uh, uh, formulation in the previous lecture. So, so the limit is not going to infinity uh, by any arbitrary sequence. It's, it's yeah. So, so that means just for the statement. Then. Okay, so look at this statement. So I am taking a uniformly converted as R times infinity on the set R between zero so that I'm that. So what I'm saying is that take R as R n plus one, uh, not R n, uh, look at the zero set, mm -hmm. plus one over n. Take the nth zero, plus one over n, that is inside that set. How do you deal with that? No, it's not enough. They, they have to be separated by a big set. That is not enough. <laughs> Because you also have to divide by that the other guy, the lambda of A1, what is that? Some A1 of A2. A2. So, K2, so K2, K2, as you, you are having this K2 over comparisons. So, this A no more of AT K2 here will lie in between R minus T2 and R plus T. So, you have to ensure that this, suppose, suppose, uh, perfect about this R, and suppose this is my R. For this R, pi lambda, sorry, for this R, this pi lambda here is not zero. Okay. Now I have to divide this by this uh, pi lambda k t k two here. Okay. But I sorry, okay. So this mod of a t k two a r is less than equal to r minus for r plus t and r minus t. So I have to choose my uh, neighborhood uh, around R, R, R in such a way that this I lambda. A T K2, yeah, it's not equal to zero. So this will be something, this will be done if I will choose my thing that I can ensure that I lambda is not equal to zero whenever this is lies in between this R minus T2 Yes. So what I'm saying is that let's pretend that phi lambda is 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. Now what I'm saying is that if what happens if I take R to be this set, 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1 over half, 2 plus 1 over 3, 3 plus 1 over 4, and so on. If I look at this sequence, this is certainly inside the set where phi lambda is not 0. Mm -hmm. Now you're saying, you're claiming, this is certainly not in the claim that so you cannot find the fixed delta, Right? You cannot find a delta neighborhood on each of these points, which is away from the zero set. Mm. So you are saying that's not possible. That this particular sequence, n plus one over n plus one, is not. You are not allowing that kind of sequence. Yeah. Okay. But as when the statement should be that R will stay away from the zero set. Yes, it should not be right. I mean, am I missing something that? No, no, no. But this statement of the theorem that is enough, but, but this proof once it once it's enough. Now it took quite this 
Can I use this to alarm point sequence? He has to check that. That's all. So he is just choosing this. I am choosing this sequence very cleverly. Okay. So this may not be happen that phi lambda. So here in this these are the very very known function Jacobi function. For that reason, we are getting this kind of properties. Oh, you are free to choose your sequence. Yeah. Not for every sequence that goes to you. Of the theorem, theorem, it is assumed. Whatever is your yeah, attention. But for this claim, it's then have to choose one or another. Okay. Right. Well, that automatically implies that it has to transfer these are classes. Mm -hmm. the, 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 yeah. So, when I continue that, uh, uh, So, what are the zeros of the Jacobi function? Yeah, they are separated. Tell us where the zeros are. Actually, I don't know. I asked this person to put in the other one. He could not answer. How can I answer? The product of two Jacobi functions, I think, put in this formula is there. Yeah. But the thing is, I asked that why the zero set of that locator is very weak. So that this is an interesting question. I never thought about it. How do you change the gap? As any, we can. Uh, we will just try and show that uh, there are some points added, that there are some gaps in between two zero sets. That I know. But uh, what is the, like the Bessel function case, this greater than pi zero sets are. That is the total. So you are going with something stronger, right? You are not saying that every. For every second that goes to infinity, if you have the average uh, converging to the upper three, then you have this uh, item something was saying. If you have a sequence which is set to the first enough from the zero set, then we have mm -hmm. no. So that's good. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, so I am uh, skipping uh, the proof of the claim. So, so, so I, with this, I would like to stop. And if you have any questions, so you can ask me. So here, here, actually, I just want to say that uh, in case of G mode K, this is we have used this. And that's so called G action and K action. So we don't have a, uh, but in case of damage with this case, actually we don't have this K action. For that, uh, we'll have to follow a different way. And actually, uh, for that, we have to use this K temporary last one. And we have to go back to the idea that sigma R convolves and sigma T is written as something. Yeah. They have to Jacobi function, but it's zero set actually there is, you don't have to say. But the proof, if you look at the proof, then you have been using this K action and G action. Yeah, if you try to use the product for also the same ratio yeah. will come. Yeah, yeah. 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 Parameter may not be coming from the real life. From the real life, but the first one should be way made in case. For some parameters, no, for some parameters, I just want to generalize with any parameter. Ah, okay, so we can write the mean value. Yeah, mean value is it. That's what they call the mean value. Yeah, you can use the product formula and probably. Is there any question in the chart? No. No. Okay, DC. Maybe stop the recording.